Simulation theory proposes that we as sentient beings are experiencing a construct, a simulated world, that our reality is a simulation and we are simply conscious constructs of that simulation. Welcome, 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 welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. The simulation theory arises out of philosophy questions like what is real? But science has got involved as well. You might think of Rene Descartes and Cogito Ergo Sum, or I think, therefore I am. But what does it mean to simply exist? What is consciousness? Is it something that can be constructed and part of a constructed universe? Nick Bostrom is a Swedish philosopher and physicist. He believes that advancements in artificial intelligence may lead to superintelligence, which he defines as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of humans in virtually all domains of interest. In 2003, he published a paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? In part, it says, many works of science fiction as well as some forecasts by serious technologists and futurologists predict that enormous amounts of computing power will be available in the future. Let us suppose for a moment that these predictions are correct. One thing that later generations might do with their super powerful computers is run detailed simulations of their forebears or of people like their forebears. Because their computers would be so powerful, they could run a great many such simulations. Suppose that these simulated people are conscious, as they would be if the simulations were sufficiently fine grained and if a certain quite widely accepted position in the philosophy of mind is correct. Then it could be the case that the vast majority of minds like ours do not belong to the original race, but rather to people simulated by the advanced descendants of an original race. It is then possible to argue that, if this were the case, we would be rational to think that we are likely among the simulated minds rather than among the original biological ones. If this topic interests you, it's definitely worth looking up this paper. There are other popular scientists who believe that the odds are in the favor of our existence being a simulation. But if we are living in a simulation, then there must be a creator. This is where the paths of philosophy and science cross religion. Is this universe a creation, one with rules that make it work? I tackled this idea in a comic that I created a number of years ago. It's from a series that I called The Between, The Big Bang. 13.8 billion years later. You have to let me in. You have to let me go back. You have to believe me before it's too late. I work in QET, testing and control. QET, quantum entanglement transit. We test entrance and exit terminals before they ship. QET terminals made most forms of early 21st century transportation obsolete. People could walk to any part of the world using the QET. The energy crisis was averted, climate warming slowed, and nations signed treaties. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm in testing and control for a manufacturer of personal terminals. We start by passing inanimate objects through a new terminal. Then we move on to animals and finally humans. It all gets quite boring after a month or two, so we try our own experiments. If the entrance and exit terminals were facing each other, we could see ourselves go through. Doing experiments for fun can often lead to unexpected results. We placed the entrance terminal on the floor and suspended the exit terminal directly above. Three, two, one. Then we dropped a tennis ball into the entrance terminal. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Turn it off! Boing, 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 boing. QET has an inertia. Once you enter a terminal, you can't go back. You have to go through. I have an idea. Want to try a watermelon? Splaboom. I have another idea. Do you know what an infinity mirror is? When two mirrors are positioned parallel to each other, they create a series of increasingly smaller reflections that seem to retreat into infinity. What would happen if we brought the entrance and exit terminals closer and closer together? Would I be able to see infinite entrance terminals? So we tried. Still don't see anything. Move the terminals closer together. Snap! 
what I hadn't counted on was the transit inertia drawing the two fields together. No! Zzzzt. Uh, where am I? The lab. The lab. I, I am the am analyst. The analyst. Uh-huh. What do you analyze? Universe, Universe simulations. simulations. I, control I control variables, variables and catalog, and catalog outcomes. outcomes. Right. I figured this Galactus wannabe was either a dream or a hallucination. So you're saying my reality is just a simulation on a cosmic server? You, you are, particles are particles of inanimate, of inanimate matter, matter arranged, arranged into, a into a configuration that supports, that supports computation, computation, causality, and experience. And experience. With ever, ever greater, greater complexity, complexity and self-knowledge self comes, comes consciousness. consciousness. Your, Your universe, universe is seeking, is seeking to, know to know itself. itself. I guess I took the red pill. So parallel universes are just simulacrums with different variables? It is, it is a garden, a garden of ascension. So why am I here? There appears, there appears to be an, to be an application, application error, error in the quantum, in the quantum encryption, encryption of your universe. Your universe. There's a bug in our code? No, wait! Ah, uh, have to go back. What do you do if a program freezes on your computer? Don't you get it? I have to go back. I have to convince the analyst not to reboot. Often when people think of simulation theory, they think of the matrix. But there is a story from back in 1964, which is largely seen as one of the first science fiction stories to posit a simulated universe with beings or constructs that are intelligent. It is called Simulacron 3, also published as Counterfeit World by Daniel F. Galloy. It's a story of a virtual city a total environment simulator for marketing research developed by a scientist to reduce the need for opinion polls. The computer-generated city simulation is so well programmed that, although the inhabitants have their own consciousness, they are almost entirely unaware that they are models in a computer simulation. What is real? What is simulation? What is free will? Is our universe created? These are the intersecting areas of philosophy, science, and religion. What do you think? Are we living in a simulation? And if we are, what impact should that have on our lives? I'm curious to know what you think. Please comment below. Until next time, be real.